This next IPO coming up is really interesting. Now guys, now what we say should be taken as financial advice. Always do your own research before making any financial decisions. Now guys, by the time this video comes up, we are pretty close to the ending of the first half of 2023. It's been a wild ride and I suspect the second half will also be equally as wild. And sometimes that can cause a little bit of uncertainty, especially with the volatility, news of war, uh, interest rates and things like that. So if you feel like you don't really have a handle or you're not so sure what you should be doing, uh, with your money in the second half of 2023, then you need to hop on to our top investment strategies. Second half 2023 free training link is in the description and the comments below. So we start off with the business. Now, MST Golf is in the golf industry, right? They um, distribute and market some of these equipment such yeah. as golf clubs, golf bags, golf balls. And I think they're also pretty big with their t-shirts, apparels and mm. all that. I had the privilege to visit their store opening, their premium outlet. I believe this is in the pavilion, pavilion mm. or gardens. I can't remember. I don't want those two. Uh, but yeah, um, maybe start off sharing with us some details of the IPO. Yes, okay, so if you look at the slides, it's not actually a typo because uh, if you're watching this video, there's actually no information. As of this recording. Yes, yeah. as there's no uh, information on their IPO. All we know is just that they have uh, 820 million shares that's going to be out uh, for this uh, company. So, but we will try to do our rough estimation on what is going to be trading, uh, what valuation will be at and what's the market cap potentially right. will be. Okay, so uh, yeah, just now MJ mentioned about their businesses already. Uh, basically, they are a golf specialty retailer and wholesaler. And yeah, they sell golf clubs, golf apparel, golf balls and accessories. And uh, they also provide like those golf related services. So if you need coaching with your golf, they also do provide those kind of uh, packages and service. They also do have this thing called the indoor golf center. Now, I think this is more like a simulation. Like uh, if you're indoor, then you just hit the, uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah so I actually, went and try out the simulation, simulation. Ah. right basically um you can just choose any driver or any club that you want you can go in it's quite spacious mm. and they give a sofa there for you to sit down while you watch other people yeah and i believe also well. you can order I, I i think they have like a sort of like a cafe kind of like concept right where you can order food also in some uh, well, so area. I don't think I saw it there. Maybe in um, you know future units or other mm. units. I'm not too sure. Okay. But I didn't see it. Oops. All right. So but I remember seeing a. I think it was a two hundred thousand ringgit club. Yeah, that's what I remember. Okay, <laughs> just one club. All right. So uh, their main end customer is of course is us. Yeah. The consumers, uh, they have about, uh, I believe, eighty percent of the revenue actually comes from selling to these end uh, customers. Uh, I think like fifteen percent is to wholesalers only. Uh, and yeah, so these are the entire brands that they represent. Lots of, I mean, I think MSD covered almost every single brand for the golf mm -hmm. uh industry. So yeah, that's actually pretty impressive. And they have about forty two uh outlets in Malaysia and in Singapore. So right now these two countries are the main presence of where they are. Uh but in the future plans we shall see which country they're gonna be venturing in. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, segment distribution based on their business activity. So you can see that about 80% comes from the retail, 15% comes from wholesale, and then the small 2% and 0.9% comes from golf related and indoor golf centers. Uh, and they also got further breakdown about their products. Now, what I love about their prospectus is that everything is very well uh presented yeah like every single information nitty all those like economic uh unit economics they are all inside over there so it's very uh insightful for their prospectors yeah i love it and uh yeah so if you want to check out what uh what products they sell they also did mention how much the does the golf clubs uh represent in terms of revenue contribution how much does the golf ball and golf apparel uh apparels uh contributed into their sales Okay, so just now we talk about their location right now. If you actually try to Google them, uh, 
it's actually not really that uh, Google friendly. I mean, because mm. uh, they do have like all of these other stores in Penang, uh, Perak, right. uh, Pahang. But if you actually go to Google Maps, they all show you at just one Selangor state only. Like, I mean, yeah, you mm. see all of the MSD yeah. facilities. Probably it's also because uh, some of their outlet is inside uh, the big shopping malls. So they have like, they rent like a, like a small little space in the big shopping mall that there's MSD there. So uh, yeah, it's not really like MSD's shop itself. And you can see that they have like this thing called the specialty store and also the pro store. So I think that's like a difference between these right. two. Uh, yeah, and yeah, hopefully Google, maybe they will update uh, pretty soon. And yeah, so this is what is the difference between specialty stores and pro stores. Uh, pro shops, uh, I won't really go through every single uh, what, what do they mean? You can actually just pause the video and read it. Okay, so uh, this is their unit economics uh very detailed they say that how much do they actually make on average uh per day per outlet so on per day basis uh the latest info that we can get is that they make around like fifteen thousand per day nice. uh, in sales so yeah that's actually very impressive and then they also did a breakdown of how much does it come from their existing outlet the new outlet and what are the closed outlets also uh and also they show you what is the number of transaction what is each uh value transaction so you can see that one item when you buy from them, it, it costs you around like 500 ringgit. Yeah, so mm. very expensive yeah. purchase uh, per transaction. Yep. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, so, and all of these good information. And I actually did uh, calculate how much do they make on an average revenue per retail store. So uh, in Malaysia, they are mm. kind of like making on average around like 3.8 million-ish per store. And they are also going to be expanding, I believe, like 15 more stores in Malaysia. Yeah. So you can roughly estimate how much they're going to be make, uh, making for those stores. But uh, mind you, those kind of like stores that they're going to be opening up is in different locations. So some is going to be in Terengganu, some is going to be in Kedah. So I'm not sure whether those areas will have the same level of uh, consumer spending as opposed to KL and Selangor. Yeah, so that, that is something that you need to take note of of the consumer spending at that particular state. But uh, nevertheless, if you can look at the Singapore's one, it's actually very choppy. So that is actually very hard for mm -hmm. you to gauge what is the true number of it. But I, uh, uh, to be if you want to play safe, you just put the, uh, the smallest number, lah, like maybe even four so million. The, or there's a drop in 2022. Mm. Is it because it's not no, completed so this yet? Is, yeah, it's not completed. So right. this is until June, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So it's like half month in Onila. I sorry, half year in. Okay, so this is some of the other information that you can get. Uh, they have been operating in Malaysia and Singapore for a very long time already. I believe it's around like uh, over 20 to 30 years already. Uh, and they, yeah, they sell a lot of SKUs and the brands that they hold is also almost entire, the entire golf industry that uh, whatever branding they can think of, they have it. And uh, they also did share with you that the top 25 brands actually contribute about 88% of the total sales for mm. 2021. So that is very impressive. Just 25 brands itself already contributed a lot. And uh, they also have this thing, the loyalty membership, uh, which is the I Love Golf program. Uh, so they have about 85,000 members and they also did share like uh, how much does this contribute? So they actually contribute about 57 to as high as 73% of the retail sales right. just for them, this uh, loyalty program. So that so shows- So reco recurring correct. revenue. Correct, yeah, they have this community inside yep. already. La. They have built yep. that. Uh, and also they also uh, they did share that the new products were actually launched uh, twice a year and usually they'll place order like six to 10 months ahead. Uh, and they have this thing called the subsisting agreements with the suppliers. Right, guys, before we move on, if you're someone looking to level up their stock investing skills and you need a lot more guidance, we do have a one-on-one -on -one program called the Mentorship Program. If you're interested, you can apply it in the comment section or the description. Okay, so uh, business aside, now we have a look at who are the teams and peers. Uh, but before that, uh, you may want to have a look at this thing called the capitalization because uh, I believe this MST company have an outstanding amount, which is about 40 million owing to this company called All, All Sports. So All Sports is actually uh, owned by uh, Ng Yang. Yasuo, which is the executive director slash group CEO of MSD. Uh, Lau Kopo is the executive chairman of the company. Basically, all of this individual has been there since uh, day one. Lah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so 
this, this is just a side information for you to know that uh, they owe MSD owe all sports so that is why they settled it with shares and cash to hmm. uh, all sports yeah and uh, so this is the shareholders post IPO you see uh, yeah all sports owns about 52% of the company and then us public will be owning about like 26%. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's still pretty big, quite big. Yeah, yeah, it's still pretty big. Uh, and yeah, and these few individuals, uh, they will own the company. So uh, yeah, these three shareholders that you want to take note of, one is the uh, All Sports because they own like half of the company already. And uh, basically this All Sports is, uh, the shareholders are all the Ng brothers. Right. So there is, uh, these are all actually in the board uh, of director. Lah part of the board and then there is this Mr. Yap Xiu which is the key person that you want to take note of he actually he started off as a civil engineer uh, engineer in 1987 but then he start to like uh, found this uh, golf kind of like company and he has been a director since 1993 for MSD and for Lokopo uh, also not related to golf but then he began as a mecha mechanical engineer and then he joined MSD thereafter and uh, he has been director since 1999. Now, uh, this is going to be a family business because not only you have the Ng brothers inside, you also have Mr. Uh, Loh Kopo's uh, wife also as a retail outlet manager. You have the sons of the CEOs also inside the <laughs> company. Yeah, so uh, you potentially is going to be run by a family la kind of thing. So that is something for you to know. Now, uh, what's interesting about this senior management, right, is that all of these three individuals have working experience with a uh, golf company. So like Mr. Yo Huai Chen, who actually he is the CEO. He started out as a trainee in a retail management, but then later he got joined uh, Penn West and Nike, which both are related to golf retailers. Yep. So they have like golf experience already. And then uh, Mr. Tan Chia Lun, who is the marketing, he also joined Pulai Spring Resort Berhan, which managed the golf resort there. Yeah, and then Mr. James, he is a pro professional in golf. Mm. Yeah, so for those hires, it's very interesting because they they pick specifically those who have golf experience, anything to do See, with golf. Then they, they send that makes game. a lot of sense, right? Yeah, yeah, it actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, that is something for you to know that they don't sleepy pick people that don't have any experience with golf. Lah. Yep, so that is it for senior management. Now let's let go look at the peers. So peers, uh, at, of course, this MST is the largest in Malaysia. They own about like 52% of market share uh, in terms of the golf equipment imported in Malaysia. Uh, and you can see that margins are also very high, about like 40% as compared to the rest. Uh, so so to say is they are actually don't really have any uh, a direct competitor mm -hmm. because their presence is already over there since 30 years ago. So yeah, nothing much to comment on. If you want to see more on this, peers, you can just pause the video and have a look. Now, here comes the numbers. Uh, if you look at these uh, few numbers, right, although it has been declining a bit, uh, the reason why you can see this number, it looks like it's declining is because this is the six months is of uh, 2022. Uh, we can expect this number to be actually better than 2021 in the future. I, If that is what I'm predicting, la, okay. I think that is what's going to happen. But something that is very interesting is that during the COVID years, right, the revenue actually didn't really plunge a lot because mm. COVID, you expect uh because golf is not a necessity kind of yeah. like company right so we expect them to actually shut down but according to our research team and friends right they mentioned that golf is actually one of the sport that they allow the public to go because they have like social distancing yeah. already yeah it's also a trend so to to cling on to that mm. when we had those multiple mcos this is 20, 20, 20, 20, 2021 right mm. i remember obviously one of the things that people were itching to do especially you know young people let's call them people below 40 mm. what they were itching to do was to play sports yeah. uh, was to play games now most young people will not want to play golf because let's be honest golf is boring and it's a spot that their fathers play, which yes. means they don't want to play it. Yes. Right? And so they prefer to do, let's say, badminton, they prefer futsal, they prefer basketball, you know, more contact sports where they get into each other. So because during MCO, uh, they are not allowed, I cannot remember the exact rules already. Yeah. I'm not sure we can recall, but it was not allowed. And so they are like, okay, what left? what is left available for mm. us to do? 
And so they have, in a way, no choice but to do golf. And so what actually, and if you're on Instagram a lot during that time, uh, you, that's exactly what you see. You see a lot of your friends who you yeah, never imagined the, that they were playing golf. Yeah, they start they'll be golf. at the long range, uh, the one that they go and the one yeah. without the <laughs> So, and th- of course, the, the, the follow-up question will be, was that sustainable? Mm. Now, my bias is that it's not sustainable for the youth at least because uh, at the end of the day, if you get to choose between futsal or golf, uh, there's a good chance you will won futsal or football. Yeah, but the thing is that it's surprisingly that sales actually managed to boost out in 2021. So yeah, actually, exactly. they actually build up interest during COVID and For then sure. they start to become like addicted and yeah. they want to buy. Part yeah. of the, the thing is golf is also a bit of an older sport for two mm. reasons actually. So the first is that it's it's um, less physical. Mm. So just walking, right? You can yeah. you can have a beer belly and be good at golf. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just like baseball. So the second thing is actually mental. So one of the things that really attracted someone like Michael Jordan to play golf, and he mentioned this. I can, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, uh, you know, basketball, you you got teammates and you kind of have to huddle up and mm. try and win the game, right? Uh, golf is on you, right? It's it's just you, and there's the famous saying in golf that you are always playing against yourself. And not only that, uh, physically it feels like that, right? Yeah, that it's just you and the hole oh. with the bunkers in between, and maybe your friends just at the side there just shouting, yeah. right? For a bit of but it's nothing like a badminton where yeah. your opponent is right in front of you. Right. Yeah, and actually, that's the really guy. true. Or you have mm. a partner right in front, f- be, beside you that you have to coordinate. Even when they have to play those, the Thomas Cup equivalent in um, golf. Golf, right? Yeah. It's still very, very separate. It's almost like you're in a silo. It's just you and the whole, you and the whole. Right. Mm. Then you can say, well, but there's crowd, right? But even the crowd have to keep quiet when yeah, the person wants exactly. to hit. Yeah. Right. It's not like badminton. You, every time there's a smash, smash there's a sound. Is- Mm. And, you know, so that's the more uh, practical aspect of golf. Yep, and, and as such, I don't think young people will take up the challenge. Yes, exactly. Yet, so that's the question on sustainability on this uh, revenue as well for MSD. Uh, well, twenty twenty two, we for I foresee that it may uh, report great numbers, but I'm not sure about twenty twenty three. We shall see how in the future. Uh, yeah. So right now they are in uh. Actually, this is a typo. It's not a net cash. It's actually a net debt. If you calculate, add these two together. Uh, it's because they have been expanding a lot uh, on their outlets. They own a lot of properties also in Malaysia and in Singapore. And they plan to do also venture into other countries, which is uh, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Thailand, which I'll show you guys later. Uh, so yeah, don't be surprised that they are in net debt. And cash flow also has been very interesting because 2020 uh, was the year that they are operating cash flow spiked a lot. And the reason why it spiked is because they actually didn't collect a lot of inventories from yeah. their uh, suppliers. Yeah. So, and they have been converting their cash collection uh, for their yeah. receivables. And that is why there's a huge spike in 2020. Uh, and they did mention that they're gonna be paying out a uh, dividend more consistently in the future about 30% of the uh, profits they will be paying out. Uh, so you can see that right now they, they are doing it right now and we shall see whether in the future they can uh, manage to continue be a dividend payer. ROIC also has been pretty good, uh, grew from 8% to 13%, but I'm not sure whether this is sustainable because we need to see whether the demand for golf will be uh, resilient in the next few years. Yeah. Uh, efficiency wise, uh, because eighty decent, yeah eighty yeah, percent of their revenue actually comes from uh retails right retail customers. So the time for them to actually delay the pay- payment is actually yeah. very minuscule. Any it's not a lot unless you are buying in bulk like corporate. Uh, so that's why you can see that their payables are higher than receivables, but their inventory is actually the biggest lah because they have to always stock up on inventories from their suppliers. Uh, just in case uh, that there's customer that wants to buy. So yeah, that is about it for their efficiency. And 
So I'm not going to comment much about this, but uh, because there's still no data on it, but you can see that they are going to be expanding a lot in Malaysia and Singapore, which they already have presence in. And they're also going to be expanding in this new geographical market. So these two are the main uh, proceeds that it's going to go into. Lah. Uh, so the first one is that how many stores is going to be opening up in Malaysia itself. It's going to be about 13 stores, uh, th sorry, 13 outlets. Uh, and then for Singapore, they're just going to be opening two. And they also did mention that how much does each store requires them to have this inventory. So I can see that there's about 2000 pieces of golf clubs, 6.5K golf balls and accessory and whatnot. So uh, yeah, as I mentioned, these are the target area that they're going to be expanding. So right now they have a lot in all those, I will say more urban city area and that actually uh, why they can manage to make so much money. But so when they actually expand to places like Terengganu, Kedah, uh, or maybe even like, uh, I don't know, like somewhere that which is not so urban or maybe suburban, I'm not sure whether there will be business will be as great as in KL or PJ. So that is something that you may want to know. Uh, this is something that I cannot comment for now. We shall see in the later time when they actually announce the numbers. Uh, and expansion number two is basically going towards new geographical area. So that's Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam. Uh, cumulatively, they're going to be opening up 16 new outlets. However, they're going to be doing a joint venture with uh, all of these countries. Uh. So uh, MST will own about 51% of this joint venture. And then the remaining 49% is owned by the locals uh, who stays over there. Uh, yeah, so this is just to show you what is the overseas stats, like how many golf course do they have? Uh, what is the population? How many golfers are actually in this uh, area? So you can see, right, surprisingly, there's a lot more golfers in Malaysia as compared to other uh, countries. Uh. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, we have pretty decent golf. Uh, what's the word? Pretty decent golf courses. Courses. And of course, I think the expansion, although they didn't state, I think it's kind of a very it's a well-known secret in that sense that it's really indonesia mm, yes yeah but i think some fun fact if i'm not mistaken this thailand has the most golf, golf courses course. per capita if i'm uh, not mistaken oh. yeah yeah some, maybe that also explains that, yeah. why they have more, the most, most golf, golf course. course sorry most golf oh, course yeah. right right so yeah uh, that's about it that's a fun fact on the overseas yeah. stacks uh oh and also another fun fact which is that they at target the payback period for them when they actually open a new store is going to take like one year and then two years if they actually open with an indoor golf center and the gross profit margin as uh, shown in the numbers just now uh, it's going to be around like 40 percent each lah. yeah uh yeah so next time maybe you will expect uh there will be a new subsidiary potential i'm not too sure or maybe they'll just keep it as it is uh because of this uh overseas expansion right like thailand indonesia so maybe we we'll see msd golf asia at the bottom but we shall see how uh yeah okay this time i'm just gonna go through very quick just to show you that the golf industry is actually a very boring very slow and boring uh the average kega i believe is they grow around like uh 4.7 to 5 percent each yep. in terms of export and import so uh it's, it's the same as singapore uh now what is the catalyst so number one is that mst is a one-stop shop i mean if you whatever equipment you want whatever repairs you need uh i believe most of the consumer would think about MSD. And also the reason why is also is because they have a lot of presence in Malaysia. I mean, when I was driving through the uh, PJ Federal Highway, I noticed that on my left side, uh, I'm not sure where, but I was just going straight. And then on my left side, I see there's a very big logo MST golf. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this actually very, um, you can see everywhere lah, basically their name is there uh they did spend a lot of money on marketing also so that one things that help people to remember their brand uh and another catalyst is basically the overseas expansion which they haven't really uh go very deep into it so that it's maybe something that is going to be positive for msd in the future uh now there's a few risks obviously because uh number one golf is not really a necessity it's more of like a lifestyle driven kind of like sports or hobby if you want to say uh so that is one thing you need to know if let's say people the consumer are willing to spend more on golf 
then definitely MSD will benefit. But is that really necessary the case if let's say uh, the country faces a recession or something like that when our spending starts to deteriorate? So that's one they need to know. Uh, and the other one is that they don't have any exclusive distribution ship with their suppliers only for supplier A, which they didn't mention what is the name. Uh, so everything is more of a short term kind of contract rather than long term. Uh, and the next one is that currency risk. So a lot of the materials that they buy is uh, coming, uh, is de denominated in USD. Mm -hmm. So about 70% of it is that. And the sales, uh, because the majority of the sales actually comes from Malaysia. So obviously it's coming from, uh, is denominated in RM. Uh, whereas for export, they export to Singapore and other countries in uh, SGD. So that is something you need to know. They I'm not sure whether they have this hedging policy or not. I may have uh, forgotten or something, but do uh, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and last but not least is obviously, um, there's a lot of sub sale and secondhand products for golfs. Uh, some people prefer to not buy a new one just to save money. Mm -hmm. So they prefer to actually buy a uh, secondhand. So I got this information from uh, one of our research team. And I also believe is one for my relative as well. Right. So yeah, this is what is they what they call the black market lah. Yeah, it's not really. Uh, mm. It's from one buyer to another uh, buyer lah. So uh, that is something for you to know. So I'm not sure whether how the how severe this secondhand or subsidy product is. Uh, but yeah, that's something that for you to ponder on. All right, guys, enjoying the video so far. If the answer is yes, remember like, comment, subscribe, and as far as comments go. If you don't like the video, do let us know as well. We always take all sorts of feedback as long as they're constructive. Now, uh, this is just my own rough estimate on what would they be trading at. So I think this valuation for MSD is going to be around like uh, 35 times to even 40 times. The reason why is the brand name, number one. Uh, they have the largest market share in Malaysia uh, and yeah, I, I I think just purely that itself already, I think they should be worth more. Uh, I mean, this is the same as for Farm Fresh. It's the same for Mr. DIY and everything that they can command a high valuation. So that will actually make this company to be around like a market cap of around 630 million to maybe potentially 800 million. Uh, so that's just my rough estimation. When By the time if they, let's say, go IPO and then we have this detail, we can see whether is my estimation right or correct but i believe it's not going to be too far off from uh, what i expect uh, for the ipo uh, to trade at okay so this is the uh, final takeaway we are here at the end so number one is that uh, if you notice their senior management they have a very unique hiring or oh, actually it's actually not really unique la, because when you want to hire of course you want to hire the guy that knows his stuff yeah so in the case you have to hire someone who has golf experience so that's actually very impressive for mst uh and number two is the 2020 numbers uh initially i thought it was quite uh sus because yeah. of covid i expect a lockdown to actually hamper their numbers a lot but it didn't really uh, so that's very surprising for me. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it over there. Uh, the second and third point is basically uh, golf is a very slow growth industry. And uh, of course, you're going to expect this company is going to be around like, a, I would say, a maturity stage already. So that is, I think that's the reason why they also want to target a 30% dividend payout ratio yeah. to the shareholders. So yeah, that's about it for MST. I hope you guys learned something today. But before you guys go- I just want to add just yeah. a few things oh. on MST, right? So I think uh, having met them and discussed with them on their plans, what is crucial to understand here is that the Malaysian growth is now it's not going to be obviously they are so established when mm. you have 50 percent market share um there's not much more you can yeah i cannot eat, right? eat, yeah uh i'm not sure about the singapore one but you might ask why are they going for an ipo well there's this typical uh, answer of that maybe they want to exit mm. it could be what the sense i got from them is that they want to go regional because what they are observing is that for example in indonesia the amount that they spend on per item is not it's very close to malaysia as well mm. and as we saw just now there are fewer golf courses than malaysia yeah about 170 la, yeah but their understand. population is eight oh, times wait, larger, times larger right? yeah so it really depends uh how you want to look at it if you just look at what they have existing then definitely it's not as attractive anymore 
And but if they do expand, especially to Indonesia and to a lesser extent Vietnam, then this could be very very big for them. Mm. Uh, and the numbers are not in at all, right? Hasn't even started yet. The second thing about uh, golf, the way they market is that uh, one of the reasons why I like the business model is. When I spoke to my dad who also plays golf and when I spoke to other golfers, I asked them this question, right? So obviously they make money because you buy their golf club, let's say. Mm. I was thinking like, hey, how do I look at this like a car, right? People make money from not selling you the car, really. It's mm. more the repair and after that or the replacement of parts or whatever. So I asked, hey, uh, how long do you service your clubs? How often do you change your clubs? You know, is there like a time period you all wait? Uh, you know, how long does it take for a club to wear out? Oh, of course, yeah. you have to adjust for average play time, stuff like that. Yes. You know, the same as a car, right? You use your car more, you're going to have to replace parts more. So what I discovered is that actually that's the wrong way to look at golf clubs. You can look at them like cars. Uh, they are probably closer to iPhones than cars. And what I mean by that is most people don't in the golf golfing world, most people don't change their golf clubs or mm. a lot of them at least because it has worn down. They change their golf clubs because it's a new one that's coming. Ah, right. Uh, right. And you know, oh, Tiger Woods is using this club. So I'm going to change it. Oh, Phil Mickelson or whoever is the Rory McIlroy, whatever, yeah. a one that major with this club, and so they change. So it's what I'm trying to say is that it's not a rational. Uh, how do I call it? It's, it's not rational. You don't have rational bias. Yeah, and these bias have a lot of money. Obviously, if you play golf a lot, you have usually you have a lot of money, right? It's yeah. an expensive sport. One golf club at a bare minimum requires you anywhere between ten to fifteen thousand ringgit to start off, right? Contrast that with badminton. You just need. A, under ring a racket and a few other cocks, right? So that uh, makes it interesting, right? It's not quite like watches, right? But you get semi-rational bias and mm -hmm. that's always a good business model. Yep. Uh, so yeah, we shall see whether in the future whether uh, they can deliver the numbers uh, when they actually do expand yeah. in Indonesia. I think that will be Because uh, 40% of their, I think, right? 30 to 40% of their IPO proceeds will be going to geographical yes. extension and where else but Indonesia and perhaps up north. Mm, yeah, okay. So uh, we actually did discuss about MST in our pro yes. uh, with our members as well. Uh, so All this information actually, you would have gotten this three months ago. Yeah, very, very early. And yeah, yeah so if you want to know all these firsthand information, uh, you can check out our Fire Pro program yep. and this is our portfolio performance. So far has been, everything's on the green, only three stocks are in the red, but then we have one company is actually up double for yep. that particular month. And as well as we have this Telegram portfolio, which we share with you guys, our uh, short-term catalyst on a particular company that is not in Fire Pro. So if you want all of this information, uh, stocks that we are looking at, definitely want to check out Fire Pro. And if you want to know more information about them, we have a free sample for you on both Fire Pro and SIB in this Fire Free Sample. So we put the links all in the description and comments for you to check it out. And that's about it for today's video. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this entire IPO watch and we'll see you in the next video. Bye -bye.